right. Um, I'm glad to be here this morning. I'm, I'm glad to be here this morning. Thank God for just keeping us. I'll just say a quick word of prayer because I sure do appreciate the prayers that have already gone forth. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now. We bless your name. We thank you for all things for this week, how you've carried us, Lord God. We thank you because we're leaning and dependent on you even for the week to come, oh God. We're asking you, Lord God, to have us hear what you would have us to hear today, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, bless each and every one of us on this Zoom. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So our lesson, um, I, a lot of comments about our lesson. Jesus points to Daniel. And it is, um, I heard a lot of people saying about Daniel, and it does make reference to Daniel. And uh, but we're gonna, I'm going to read the scripture first, and then we'll kind of break it down a little bit. And the scripture reading for the text is Mark chapter 13, verse 14. But we, when ye shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of, by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not be. Let him that readeth understand. Then let them that be in Judah flee to the mountains, and let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of the house. And let him that is in the field not turn back again for to take up his garment. But woe to them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in the winter. For in those days shall be affliction, such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord hath Shorten those days, no flesh should be saved, but for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And then if any man shall say to you, lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not, for false Christs and false prophets shall rise and shall shew signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. And the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds from the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. And that is the word of the Lord in Mark. So in our scripture today, I would start out with the first, uh, the first verse 13. Jesus is speaking to his disciples on the Mount of Olives. And, and looking over the magnificent city of Jerusalem, and and I'm going to paraphrase it. And, and they were standing around and they were looking at the beauty. And he was talking to his disciples, including you know Peter, James, John, and Andrew. They're gathered around Jesus, eager to hear, you know, what he's teaching. The time is coming near. And they, they're just trying to soak up as much as, this is just a little bit back of background about the setting. They're trying to soak up as much as uh, they can. And he speaks to his disciples and they listen intently. And the first thing I did was when he speaks about the desolate, the abomination, abomination, a thing that causes disgust or hatred. And then the desolation, a state of complete emptiness or destruction. And it can also mean anguish, misery, or loneliness, but it always ends with that loneliness. So, and they're talking to him and he's saying, um, 
one of them had asked him, you know, how will we know? How will we know? That's the, the big question. How are we, how are we going to know when the end is near? And this is what he was explaining to them. And it made reference to what Daniel said in um, chapter nine, verse 27. Daniel was talking about the covenant being confirmed uh, for one week. And then in chapter 11 and 31 in Daniel, it describes the abomination that causes desolation and the setting up of the abomination that causes the temple to be desecrated. So what they were talking about was in Daniel, of course, we, we've gone through a lot of history about Daniel and how, you know, the king was um, pretty much dismissing all of the beliefs of the true and living God even to the point of destroying the temple. And what, what our lesson today is, it does make reference to the biblical terms of what it meant in those times. However, if we are wise, we will understand that though Jesus spoke in parables, it is for today. Have you ever asked yourself the question, how will we know when the end times are near, many uh, saved people or people in the church, when things bad are happening and the, and the more things are happening now, you will hear them say, oh my God, I know the end time is here. I know we are coming close to the end of time. It, it, it's right upon us because all these bad things are happening. And that and that is true. That is very true. We and if you go to Revelations, and if you've ever studied Revelations, there isn't, there's not one other prophecy needing to happen. Nothing else really needs to happen in order for, for the coming of the Lord. You know, he, the word has been preached, the different things that he said would happen before his coming, all of those things have happened. So right now, if someone were writing the script, this is the setting. It could be any day, any moment, any time, and it could have always been. But if you look and read read the times and, and if you study the word and study what's happening around us, you will see that it is nearer now than it ever was before. So back to the scripture when he says, um, when you see the abomination, when you see these hideous, heinous things happening, and when you see desolation the emptiness emptiness of what emptiness of the word emptiness of the church emptiness well churches are full you might say but the true word of god is being depleted is being watered down because that is the essence that is the one goal of the enemy and is to get us off turn us away from what's happening what is true what is what's really what the true word of god is and it says here and it, and it seems like i'm jumping a little bit i have a few because it there's a lot and i know we can't get every little piece but i want to hit some of the main main forces um that that it speaks about so i wanted to make sure you understood that what daniel was talking about was for his time but it also gave because remember the Old Testament is types and shadows. So it gave us a glimpse of this is where we are again, yet again. This is where we are again, that these the end times are coming. These things are, are happening. So, and then Matthew um, 24 and 15 Matt, of Matthew also references the same scripture is about the prophetic warning given by Jesus regarding the arrival of the desolating, sacrilegious, sig signifying the importance of vigilance and faithfulness in the face of deception and tribulation. Tribulation is hard times, troublesome times, weary sometimes now. So Matthew hits it even stronger when he's saying it. It's, it's about your faith right now. It's about your belief right now. It's about what we stand for right now. That's what he's saying. Um, the scene was the same, you know, sitting there and he's, so they're parallel. He tells it in a different way. Um, Thessalonians 
chapter, the second Thessalonians chapter two, you'll see it again. He's warning against the rise of a great deceiving leader who exalts himself above God's and proclaims himself to be God, leading people away from true worship. Let no one deceive you in any way, for the day will come unless the rebellion comes first that the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself in every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God, which we know that God's not going to let that happen. But this is the setting. So I'm hoping everybody understands. This is the setting. Mark is, they are with Jesus. They're talking about what's getting ready to happen. And they're wanting to know, just like we're wanting to know, how will we know? How can we tell? This is how you can tell. Watch the times that we're living in. Um, I would encourage you to listen to some of the news, not all of the news, but listen to um, what's happening. Watch Israel. Watch what's going on there. That's biblical reference. So that's what that scripture is is talking about. The 13th, um, that uh, 14th verse. And then he says, um, and then it says, um, the, the next scripture was, and let him that is on the housetop not go down into any, neither <clears throat> go and get anything out of the house. What is he saying um, in that scripture? So I have some references here that explain why it was referred that way. And basically what he's telling us is, it says, let him that is on the housetop not go down nor enter to take anything out of his house. The roofs of the houses were flat with frequently a little, a little dome in the center. The people sort of hung out on the top and they kind of lived, you know, everyday living was on the top. The stairs of the house were on the outside so that a person that wanted to get into the house has to go to the outer stairs to get into the house, right? So I'm explaining that because, and if you if you also know when when they lowered the the man down to be to be seen by Jesus from the house, that's why that was able to happen because they could do that. There was that opening there on the housetop, and he, like I said, Jesus talks in parables. So what he's saying is, do not go back and get anything. Be ready, stay ready. When you go out, he was, he was referring to those in the field. When you all, you know, or on the, on the house tops, don't go down, even right down to the house to go get anything out because you're not going to have time. It would be better for you to run from house to house because they're flat and you go straight until you can find a way. But when you're fleeing in a hurry, you go and you make your exit quick. Don't try to go down there and pick up anything and gather up anything. This is where the trust in God really has to come in. And in today's language, I would say to you, don't go back and get anything old. Don't go back and try to save someone else. Don't go back and try to um, convince someone who has their 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 guard up. Don't 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 sit there and listen to them for too long. That's a waste of your time, and it will taint your spirit. You take what you have, hold on to what we have, hold on to the truth that we know and don't take up any, anything else and be ready. It's a reference for us to be ready and stay ready and not be persuaded in any way to, to try and gain anything in this world, to gather up anything in this world it's not going to last. It's not going to be here forever. Um, so that that's where the scripture is. And so that's a little bit of the background of why he chose to do that, that type of parable and what it might say to us today. It says, but take heed, behold, I have foretold you of all things. Um, 
that's I'm sorry, that's down in 23. So then it says in 16, and let him that is in the field don't turn back again to take up um his garment. Stay where we are. Does that mean not grow in God, not get deeper in God, not want to learn more about? No, the more you know, the more ready and more, the more prepared you are. Someone, um, and if you have any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, someone was saying, how can the elect be ready or, or get ready? This is how. The elect can get ready by not being deterred. If this message today is saying anything to us, what it's saying to us is the coming of the Lord is soon. And you don't know the day nor the hour. And I know it doesn't use these words, but you cannot afford to listen to anything, to hear anything, to try to gather anything and build up anything in this earth if it's not pertaining to Jesus and moving you toward the coming of the Lord, leave it alone because he's soon to come. And when he makes his appearance, that's the verse down in 26 and 27, when he comes and when he makes that great appearance, there will be no time to gather up anything. There will be no time for you to come and try to um, build anything or, or save anything, get anything right, make anything, uh, smooth anything over. You, you will not have time to do any of those things. And then people may wonder, well, what does it mean? Because they have a way of distorting God's word when it says, um, woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. I have in, in this study, some of the most heinous things have come out. You shouldn't have children. You shouldn't do that. That's not what this scripture says. The scripture says, woe unto you. You have child if you are pregnant. Why is he making that reference? Because when you're with child, he said, what did he say? You flee and flee fast. If you're pregnant, if you your wife has ever been pregnant. If anybody you know has ever been pregnant, you can't move that fast. So what he's saying, it's a warning. Be cautious, be careful, understand. It will be more difficult, um, he says. And to them that give suck in those days. And then if we have children, this is today's, this is in today's message, this same setting. If we have children, be very careful. Many people miss out because of children. You tend to bend what you truly believe because of children. And what I love is um, I was at a, a council, a leadership meeting, and one of our leaders was teaching um, in the licensing department. She said that she told her children I'm getting ready to get out of here. And I loved you. And I've sown everything I could. These are her adult children. I've sown everything that I could into you. And I see the way you all are doing your children. And it made me think. And her children love her. She said, you all love me. You appreciate me. You dote over me. So why is it that what I taught you isn't good enough for your children? Why are you not teaching it to your children the way I taught it to you? The times are changing, yes. But what I taught you, holiness is still right. Holiness is still expected. If we're going to go anywhere, it's still expected. So there's a warning or a watching that we need to be careful. Those that have children, those of us that have children, even in that, because why? Because they're near and dear to our heart. Don't take down. Don't compromise because you have children. Pray that your flight be not in the winter. I would have thought that that would, that would be um, an obvious clue because 
It's harder to travel in the winter. It's harder to, you know, move around in the winter when the when there's horrible weather, uh, bad weather, whether it be stormy, rainy, snowy, anytime there's any difficult weather, it's harder to move around. So that would be where it says, well, you know, pray that it do, it do, it not be in the winter. Um, I'm just le looking at my notes here. Very. And it says here, um, it goes, you know, down to 19. For in those days shall be affliction. Now, this, this I thought was interesting. Affliction, something that causes pain and suffering. Great pain, great suffering. So with affliction doesn't only cause pain, but it's suffering pain. That means lingering painfulness um, with, with it. And so Jesus outlines the future of tribulation so severe that it surpasses all previous afflictions, reminding believers of the necessity of steadfastness amidst trials. So he's making reference to the times of tribulation. How can we use this today? When we are having trials, when we are having tests, when there is devastation, and there is devastation now, it may not hit you right now, but people are being devastated. There are people that are struggling with housing. There is there is famine coming. I don't know if you've heard about it. There are shortages in different areas. Yes, there's always been famine in those countries out, you know, in Africa, some parts of Africa, Philippines, there's always been um, a, a famine, but it's here now. It's it's here. There won't be access to food. Okay, so there's different ways of affliction, painfulness, suffering, things that are coming coming our way. What is he saying? Be steadfast. Be unmovable. Um, know that God loves us. Know that we He's preparing us. He's giving us insight now for the things that are going to come beforehand and even during that great tribulation, which we pray that we're not there in the great tribulation. But before that great tribulation, things will get bad. Things things will things are getting bad now. They're not wood. It's now happening. If you don't know that things are are in our economy are growing worse and worse, no matter what they tell us, we live every day, we see every day the shortages, the things that are happening. And it says in verse 20, except the Lord shortened those days. Had he determined that those days of affliction should be but a few and not last long, this <clears throat> the siege should not be longer, should not be longer continued and the devastations within and without not be prolonged. No flesh should be saved. There would have been... Um, there wouldn't have been a Jew left that nation and race men would have been utterly destroyed from the face of the earth. But he said, but for the elect's sake, those whom he hath chosen in Christ unto eternal salvation, who were either then upon the spot called or uncalled, that they were to spring from succeeding times. Okay, so what is all that saying? What that saying is, except for the ones that God has chosen, he shortened up the days so that, that we could make it, so that we wouldn't have that great suffering, so that we would be able to see and know, okay, he's he's coming for us soon. It's getting it's getting real bad now. He's coming for us soon. Though so that would be verse 20. And then as we go down, um, down a little bit, um, 
but take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things, okay? And then he talks, but in those days after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. We are praying that we are not present for these things. And the stars of heaven shall fall and the powers that are in the heavens shall be shaken. And then they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send angels and shall gather together his elect from the four winds. Okay, there's, there's, there's something here. There's two translations here. The first thing is when Jesus, when the rapture comes, he's not coming to the earth. So this is not talking, you know, he's not, he's not coming to the earth. He, we are going to be caught up. So that's when we will be caught up. And I hope I'm making sense of, of this. If there are any questions, please feel free to put them in the in the uh, chat and, and we can go back over them. I'm trying to get through it fast because it is these um these lessons are a lot of history. And and you might think like, why why should we be studying the history? We should study the history to know what's coming now, what will be coming soon. How will the elect um make it through these times? How will we be saved from these times? The only way we can be saved is to stay stand steadfast and unmovable unto the truth. The truth is never going to change. Remember, he's the word. The word is him. If we stay in the word, we're in him, right? So that is how we are going to make it. We won't make it any other way, saints. We will not make it any other way. Everyday life terms is saying this, hard times are coming and are here. Pressing times are coming. Thicknesses are coming and they're here. I don't, I mean, not a week goes by that is not some challenge, some challenging event. Um, we hear it on the news. All these different things are happening and they're happening now. This was the warning saying, these are happening, but hold fast to your truth. Don't let anybody move you away from what we know is right. What, what do we know is right? Baptism is right. Tell everybody you know. Baptism in Jesus' name is right. Holiness, holy living, not just getting the Holy Ghost and, and not just saying, you know, speaking in tongues because they're all doing that now. We speak about um, the different false prophets that have come. In 1997, uh, when they had Heaven's Gate and that man was, he burnt up, you know, I think that was the one that um, led all those people astray, killing themselves. In uh, 1993, about 80 people died in the fire at, over at Waco with David Koresh. Um, and then, of course, there was 1978 when Jim Jones had everybody drinking the Kool-Aid. Those were false prophets that some would say, well, wasn't that obvious? Well, look at today. What do they do today? They took a little bit of scripture or they'll take a lot of scripture and, and mix a little bit. If you just change one thing, you change the meaning of the scripture. What is God really saying? He's saying, don't be deceived. Don't be tricked because these times are coming. And then Sister Du Bois is saying, the book of Daniel is one of the end time prophetic books. Study along with the book of Revelation. Amen. You study Daniel with Revelations. And in these Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will see some of the same things because what were they doing? The apostles, they were giving the doctrine. So they were telling those people in that time, yes, this is what will happen. This is what's going to happen. When people study the book of Revelations, oftentimes they're looking for the Antichrist. They're looking to see where he's going to come and how he's going to come. When you study Revelations, look for Jesus. Study to seek Jesus. Every passage in this word, study to see Jesus. If we follow Jesus, then we will know. And that is what Mark 13 through 27 is saying. If we stay steadfast in the apostles' doctrine, which was Jesus, we will know 
and we won't concern ourselves when it's going to happen because we're going to be already ready, right? We're living to live again. Each and every single day, we live to live again. So what he's saying is don't go down and pick nothing else up. Don't try to rescue and save anything or anyone. Those of you, with, be very careful if you're with child. If you are pregnant, if you are, are having those of us with families, be very careful in this day because the trickster will come and try to deceive you. We don't live on our rooftops. That wasn't meant for us. But where we live, we treasure things sometimes more than we treasure the God of those things. When he, when they looked out from the Mount of Olives, the parable goes, they were looking out and they were admiring the beauty of the temple and of the city. And he said, you can admire this, but there's going to come a day that none of this is even going to be here. Not one stone upon the other. None of this is going to be. That's how they started talking about. And then they got curious. Well, what do you mean? What's going to happen? And when is it going to happen? They were asking Jesus. And then he started talking in these parables, saying, this is what will happen. This is what we need to watch out for. This is what we need to look for. Look for Jesus. Live for Jesus. Don't hold. They used to say it so much, um, um, wear everything as a loose garment. I, I said, oh, is it in the scripture somewhere? Now, I didn't find it today for you. But they said it to us so often. I knew that that, had, that was in there. Just like that. And it might be in there, but maybe not the way the, the, the mothers used to say, wear everything loosely. That's what he's saying here. Don't go back. If you're in the field working, don't go back and try to, 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 to go back to the house. Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep because when it's time to go, it's time to go. You, you're not going to have time to pick anything up. Keep going. And then he goes back to when he says in 23, he goes back to, he said, listen to what I'm saying. Take heed. He said, I've told you, I foretold you of everything. Remember what I told you. Study my word. Study what I'm telling you. Nothing's going to come to you as a surprise if you're staying where I'm, I'm telling you. Because that's what he said. Take, but take ye heed. Behold, I have foretold you all things. So the saints shouldn't be surprised. Yes, the coming of the Lord is come. He is here and is now. And is now. If you study the book of Revelations, there's not one other thing that needs to happen. There's no other thing that needs to happen for Christ to come. The word has been preached. Everything is in motion. Don't look for the Antichrist. He's here. He's been here for years. The Antichrist, the spirit of the Antichrist has been here. What is the spirit of the Antichrist? The spirit of the Antichrist is anything that puts itself as God and above the true and living God. Is he taking up post now? Yeah, he's taking up post now. He's been setting it up. Don't give in to that. Don't give in to any of it. Don't panic when the hard times come, when the famine comes, when the housing crisis comes, when cities and towns are washed away by tsunamis, all these great and devastating things. Don't get panicked. Don't get out of place. I've already told you these things were coming. They were going to happen. And that, if we don't get anything, and this is just me, if I did, and, and there's a lot of background, you know, there's a lot of, um, you can pull it apart, break it down. Um, we have heard a lot of history um, about Daniel and what was happening in those times and how God gave it to me one night is all of that is important and it's good, but it's only important so that you know what's happening now. He said, but what I need you to know now to me, maybe it's not, I'm just going to share it with you. Don't be shaken in your mind. Don't be soon shaken. Understand. Don't try to go and do anything different, no matter what they are saying. 
I heard a preacher a few weeks ago tell us, if your favorite preacher, and it stuck with me, if your pastor, your favorite preacher is not preaching, Jesus is coming, you might want to consider. And that's all I'm going to say. Because it's now. It's, it's not now. It's not getting ready to happen. And I know, and, and if you're young or if you were in my era, you used to say, oh, they've been saying that for years. Okay, they've been saying it for years and maybe so. But look at, now look at Revelation and watch Israel. And say, watch everything. Watch what's happening in America. He said, watch Israel. And then do you do the comparisons? You do the comparisons and revelations as to what's happening there because some of the names have changed of the bodies of water, the wars that are happening there and what's going on there. And then read the scripture and it, it becomes more plain, if I might say, more plain that way. So um, I, I think I've covered all of my scriptures and I had two outlines here and I think I've gone there. I tend to go fast because I'm nervous. So you forgive me if it was too fast or if it sounded like rambling. I'm just trying to do my best. Bro. So, but um, the message um, and when I say that, I say do my best is to, to give the message as it was given to me, because I like to study the word and I like to understand the word, but I also like for the word to, Lord, make it make sense for me right now. That That's that's sometimes how I, I say it. M make it make sense to me in, in the right now times, you know, in, in where I am right now, you know, and it also, there are some cross references um, and if you go up a little bit, chapter uh, 13 and 6, many shall come in my name saying, I am the Christ and shall deceive many. Now, many people who were, who are saved, baptized in Jesus name, filled with the Holy Ghost, believing and living, okay, a holy life. Someone says, I am the Christ and I'm the one you've been waiting for. We might not believe that. But if someone comes and teaches a, a Bible study and, and, it, and it alters some things that we are doing and, and oh, well, you know, you, that's really not necessary for these times. Or, or you really don't have to do it that way. You know, you, you can really do it this way because times have changed. That was for back then. Some people might be inclined to believe that. Some people may be inclined to say, oh, is that what that meant? Um, is that, is that how, you know, is that, and that's how they get deceived into the truth. <laughs> Revelations is better than tomorrow's, than tomorrow's news. You got that right. If we, if we, you're right, you got that right. That's just the voice. Revelations is better than, than tomorrow's news because Revelations is telling you what, what's happening, what's getting ready to happen in tomorrow's news. Absolutely. I concur with you. Um, so, so let me go back. So in, in that minute, when we, if we were to read up a little bit, that's what it would, that's what, that's how it makes sense to me. You know, they're going to come in my name. They're going to, and that's, those are the elect that he's deceiving. You know, how do we grow our churches today? Well, we have to compromise. We have to do some things a little different. Mm, be careful about that. Be careful about doing things differently. And I am all for doing things differently and, you know, making it more um, flexible. I mean, we're on Zoom. We're not in the building. That That's not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. We're assembling in one place at one time. You, you get what I'm saying? Yes, we should go to church. But by any stretch, do not let the fact that you can't go to church stop you from gathering. Does that make sense? So yes, things are changing. Times are changing. But the word's not going to change, saints. What God is saying is not changing at all. So I hope I um, was able to drive that home. Um, 
I don't know. There may be questions, and I, and I will answer questions. I have a lot of um, information here. Um, I didn't want to go to too many um, other scriptures. I did take that one, verse 6, but I did want to stick to the lesson because sometimes when we do that, we tap into somebody else's lesson that's going to come next week. So I didn't want to um, do that altogether. So I hope you all got something from... Um, from this lesson. I don't I don't know. I didn't keep any time or anything. Amen. <laughs> uh it's uh you 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 stopped uh right when you were supposed to just by one minute. Okay. Uh, but I just really appreciate uh the word of God and the way you brought out the scriptures uh to make it applicable for today. Because where we are in this time, and I know we've heard this, I've been in church 40 something years, and I've heard that, you know, the Lord is coming soon. And it's sooner now than it was in 1975 when I first met, met the Lord. And I like that question that you put out. How will we know when the end time is near? And that's a, a, a question for every generation. That's a question down through the eons of time. How will we know? You'll know it's the end time lined up with the word of God. Because if you read the word of God, if you study what he is saying and all the prophetic messages, we may cannot get it exactly how uh, Daniel understood it. But God gives us enough insight. I like what you said about your prayer. Uh, make it so I can understand it like right now in, in the time that I'm living in. God will help you to understand it for the time that we are living in today. And we know if you look at uh, history, if you look at the times, the, uh, the things that are going on in this world, if you go to the book of, uh, who is this? This is in Mark. If you go to the book of Matthew, if you go to Daniel's book, if you go to the scripture, it will tell you that we are living in the last days. The abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel it's the same thing that he's talked about. It's detest, it's de, it's disgusting. It's something that almost make you want to throw up. Excuse me for saying that. But it's it, it, it's so disgusting, the things that we see now, that it, it does make you want to just, you can't hardly stand some of the things that you see and that you hear. It's disgusting some of the abuses and the atrocities that we see in this world, it's, dis, it's, it's an abomination. It goes beyond human comprehension that some of these things that we see going on. If we look at the children of Israel, who is the timepiece for humanity? They are the time clock, God's time clock. But if you look at what's going on in their uh, arena, some of these scriptures line up so perfectly well with that. Don't go back and take your kids. These people had to run for their life. Don't go back and, and try to get anything. Whatever on your back, take that and get gone. These are the times that we, these are the evil times, the last days. We see a lot, even in, even in the churches, how they're changing the, the message of Jesus Christ. And giving you all kind of crazy thinking, not teaching you the word. This is why we are so uh, uh, compassionate about Sunday school, because we know that when we come to Sunday school, we're going to hear the word. This is what you have to hold on to. Not all of this uh, philosophy and psychology and you know, that's good within its own realm. But when it comes down to your soul salvation, 
What are you holding on to? What do you have? You cannot substitute a program or what you believe for what the Bible then laid out for us. We have where they took the Bible and they added the, the Constitution and the 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 and all this other stuff. God said, don't add nothing to my word, don't take nothing from it. That's 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 total violation of God's word. We cannot allow these things to be normal as a believer. We cannot sit back and say, okay, well, that's okay, that's cool. You know that you cannot accept it if you're saying that you believe what Christ told us to believe. God will not allow us to substitute anything for his word and what he told us. And uh, Minister Bolding, you talked about uh, the different ones that, the different preachers that, uh, who was that? Uh, Koresh. Oh, Jim Jones. About that. Yeah, Jim, Jim Jones. Koresh, uh, David Koresh, who um, in Waco, he, it was over 80 people burned up in the fire because he was the Lord and they were following him. And Jim Jones was, uh, you know, it, the, he was sending them, this is what God told us to do for him and had them drinking the Kool-Aid and so many, I think it was thousands of people. Let me, I researched, yeah. um, hold on, let me look at my note. How many people died there? Um, it was like a, a mass suicide. They just said mass, it was thousands. Um, and then there was uh, Heaven's Gate. Those people that died in that, in that, when that man said that he was the Lord. Yeah. Speaking so, from God. Right. It, it, it makes me, you know, it's where uh, he said if it were possible, uh, they would deceive the very elect. If it's possible now, there they could deceive the very elect. But how do you think that these people can be deceived? It's because they deviate from the truth that you, you, you substitute what God has said in his word uh, because you using your, you, you know, you using somebody else's thought instead of using what God say in his word. What'd you say, Leon? Well, this person not even reading the Bible. Right. The average person not yeah. reading the Bible. So right. if you read the no. Bible, you can see it like right now. The Bible speaks of everybody lined up against Israel whole Middle East lined up against Israel, China, Russia. You know, you can see it coming down the pipe. You know, yes. but people don't read the scripture. If you read the scripture, it's plain as day. Yeah. It's plain as day. It so speaks thing, a lot in, in, in signs and symbols when it talks about you have to they don't under they don't break it down. The bear, the eagle, and the dragon. Yeah. They're talking yeah. about that, the war that, that's happening with um uh, Russia. You know, yeah. that all taking over that land, they don't see the big picture because what? You're not lining it up with the word. What, yeah, what, what and even, even if even if you cannot understand the, the prophecy, how uh, Daniel put it out there, even you if you can't break it all down, that it ain't nothing wrong with that because everybody not going to get it no way. Mm -hmm. But what you do get is the basic foundation that Jesus is coming soon. Pay attention to the time that we're living in. Know this something is getting ready to happen. You got to know that. You got and to you know, know else... based right. upon this life, you got to know something getting ready to kick off here. Mm -hmm. It ain't got nothing to do. Uh, uh, it, it got a lot to do with the times that we just living in. It's the evilness that's going on. Nobody can keep doing wrong and get away with it. It ain't going to, you know, nobody care who it is. And like what I was gonna say was people don't realize the, the one world order is coming. That's what NATO is. Everybody it's trying to get in NATO. Here. Everybody it's already to get here. It just has not been um, you know, rolled out all together so that the whole world, <laughs> but it's already yeah. here. Everything is in yeah. place. Yeah. Everything yeah. is in place. And and if you have lived, I mean, I've, I've we've been on this world long enough to know that these are not normal times. 
you know, you've been on this world, on this earth long enough, 20, 30 years, you know something is about to take place. Carolyn Wade, are you there? I just want to say to uh, Brother Leon, watch the cryptocurrency. Yeah, cryptocurrency. Watch it. Watch your money. Watch your money. There yeah. and Forex. Mm -hmm. Forex, crypto, all you that crap. It. Yes, yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's, <laughs> it is, it is, um, you, you mentioned um, that we should not compromise. Right. And that we need to teach our children. You can't get it in your kids these days because mm. TikTok got them and Facebook got them and Snapchat got them. You understand? And all of the video games, Fortnite and all this stuff. They're not reading anything. Ain't reading They're enough. not reading. Reading those things. And so what does that what does that leave you to do? You said on here, uh, Brother Roy Style, Jim Jones was the cult leader of the Jonestown Massacre. Yep, yeah. 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 Yes. Yep. In Guyana in the 70s. Yep. yep. Yeah. And I'm drinking the Kool-Aid. 900 people yep. died. Yep. The murder suicide. Yep. And that's and where, where and a lot of young people. And, and just to prove to you that that our children are not reading, a lot of young people, when when we use that reference, oh, he drinking the Kool Aid that they serving over there, they don't even know what that that means. That's what that's where that comes from. And yeah. and just just to add to your point again, you said something strong, and I actually had that the reading because my example was this: uh, I went to a school conference, and um, uh, she said are we just encouraging the kids because they have this thing called Lit Circle and to get books and, and to read them. And I said, you know, we haven't had a trip to Barnes and Noble in a while. We, we need to maybe get some, get another book or two so you can start reading. And he said, oh, we could just do an online book. And I stopped right there. I was on my way to the restaurant. I stopped, I said, no, <laughs> we're gonna get a paper book and read. Yeah, we're not book. gonna do it <laughs> online. And that is true. Even when it comes to the Bible, let us be careful. Because do you know if, and when that happens, when they start to change everything, because he did say these things would happen, if the only thing you have is an online Bible, the, the easiest thing to do is to switch it. You know, anything That's online, they, you don't have total control over. So That's just, true. you know, th th there's something to that also. Make sure we know. That's why he said, thy word have I hidden in my heart, saints. Get yeah. that word and don't ever let it go. Whatever we were taught right. back in yesteryear, don't ever let it go. Because yeah. you don't want to forget that stuff. You don't want to forget it. That is so it. true. You always need a paper a paper copy of everything these like days. Like most of the time, we don't remember <laughs> phone numbers. Why? Because we have, we have yeah. gotten a dependency on the electronic, right? So yeah, if we, yeah. if we do that with the phone numbers, how how stands it with the word? I just wanted to add that song. In that real estate, so true. in real estate, if it's not in writing, it didn't happen. Right. If you're not that is so true. Somewhere, it didn't happen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Carol Wade. Wade. Yes, ma'am. I didn't know if you could hear me. I'm having trouble. I'm driving on the way. Um, okay. I just wanted to say this is an excellent lesson, and mm -hmm. uh, it reminded me of the Oh, her, you went out. You're on mute. She hit the mute. Yeah, you hit okay, the mute button. No. Yeah, yeah, there, there we go. go. Okay, I don't know how long <laughs> I have to speak, but this message reminded me of uh, how uh, God spoke to the children of Israel when they were leaving Israel, mm -hmm. uh, or leaving Egypt. Mm -hmm. And yeah. basically it's quick, be quick, and yeah. uh, don't leave anything um uh, you know, don't don't worry about anything else. Just get up and go. And it really kind of speaks to the idols that we have created mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there is any division in our love for God, it's like he's telling us now this is a precautionary tale. It's like he's yeah. telling us now it's like get those things in order. Get them right. Uh, mm -hmm. If you need to tell somebody about being saved, tell them. It's like because yeah. at some point the time will come where you won't have time to tell them because you'll just be able to save yourself. And That's the right. interesting thing to me is to know that Jim Jones, 
started out in an apostolic church in Come Indianapolis. On. And uh, I was like, now that has always concerned me. But one of the things that the scripture does tell us is that the wheat and the tear grow together. Grow and together. it's like, I could be, uh, I don't, I pray that I'm not, but I don't want to be a tear that, that is dressed like wheat, you know, yeah. because mm -hmm. God will mm -hmm. be able to separate us and he will be able to tell the difference. And so now we need to start praying and say, God, help me to understand your voice. Help me to know. Help me not yes. to be deceived. Help me to be ready. Help me not to be a tear and help me to yeah. be focused on you. So yeah. this is very similar to John the Baptist, a message that John the Baptist gave as he was preparing the way for the coming of Christ. Yes, and, and these prophecies are like a preparing the way for his return again. Yes. Thank Amen. Good. Amen. Thank Amen. That's awesome. That is awesome. We have been blessed uh, by your ministry today, uh, Minister Bowden, and we are so appreciative of, you know, what God is allowing us to hear today. You know, it really shows you how much God loves us to give us, give us an understanding as to the time that we are living in. We won't be taken advantage of if we pay attention to what he's saying to us. You know, these, these scriptures were written long before we came on the scene. Mm -hmm. But God's seen our day. He's seen that this day, what is it? October the 20th, 2024, 1030, that we needed to hear this for our own soul salvation. We are living here to live again somewhere. And it's up to us that God loves us so much that he said, I want you to hear what I'm saying. Time is drawing nigh. Get your house in order. Get your life in order. Do what I tell you to do. Pay attention to what's going on around you because this is coming to an end someday. So I love God and, and respect him for caring enough of us. If you don't take it, Sandra going to take it. He loves Sandra so much. He's telling me, get your house in order. Pay attention. And believe what I told you. I'm coming and I'm coming soon. So we appreciate you, Minister Bowden, for preaching to us today. God is a good God. And thank you all so much for coming to Sunday School. Eternal God, we thank you today. You have blessed us with another powerful word today, Lord God. We appreciate the pureness of your word, the truth of your word, the understanding of your word, the love that we have felt from your scriptures. We pray, Lord God, that you will help us to, Lord God, be ready when you come. Help us to be about your business and to keep our minds stayed upon you. Bless every family here today, every household, Lord God. Remember our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. Remember our companions, Lord God. All of our family members, we love them, Lord Jesus. Help us to live right and to walk upright before you. Help us, Lord God, that we will wear this world as a loose garment and that we will be ready when you come. Help us, Lord God, to look to you for our strength. We need your strength, not our strength, Lord. We need you to give us, Lord God, a mind to, to be grateful and a mind to serve you, Lord God. And we thank you for what you have done. We thank you for what you're going to do. And we pray that you will bless every family here today and keep them as they go throughout this week. Whatever it is that they have need of, Lord God, work it out according to your way. And we thank you for what you have done because you are magnificent in everything that you do. And we love you in Jesus' name, amen. Smooches, everybody. God bless you all. Have amen. a great week. Yeah, thank you, Cheryl. That was great. Thank you so much. God bless you all.